What's up Muscle and Strength, IFBB Pro Brett Kahn here. Today we're gonna to give you some tips on the do's and don'ts of foam rolling. Foam rolling is a form of myofascial release. That essentially means release of the muscle. All right, over top of the muscle body, you have a thin layer of connective tissue that's primarily made up of collagen. That muscle tissue is going to kind of hold the muscle or surround the muscle body. Now, over the course of time, because of injury, because of the way someone trains or muscle imbalances, it can adhese or restrict and cause little tender points or trigger points within the muscle body, thus changing your biomechanics, the way you move and create sore, achy joints and muscle bodies. Let's talk about the don'ts with foam rolling. First off, you want to make sure to avoid rolling over bony surfaces. Examples would be the knee or the elbow. You want to stay away from those points because one, it's not going to be very comfortable, and two, you're not going to have any benefit from it. So the next one is going to be avoiding bruises or avoiding injured areas of the body. If you're unsure if you should roll, say, around a recent injury, then you want to consult with someone, primarily your primary care physician, a physical therapist, a chiropractor, someone to give you that information to give you the green light to, to work those particular areas. And then lastly, you want to watch rolling your low back. I see a lot of people who will place the foam roller on their low back when they're in a upright position or when they're on their back. That can cause you to put too much pressure on the lumbar spine. It will promote more of a, a forward curve in your low back and actually kind of jam the joints of the facets uh, into each other, which can cause more discomfort. And that's not what we're looking for here. Okay guys, so now that you know what not to do, let's talk about what to do. So the first do would be to make sure that you're working out muscle imbalances, that you're finding those muscles that are a little bit tighter, where you have those restrictions and tender points, and you really focus your energy there. So when you get to that point that you found an area you wanna focus on, you wanna make sure that you also cover the areas around it. In doing so, you can not only roll forward and backward, you wanna turn your foot in or outwards so that you're able to get more of the fascia and cover a larger surface area. And lastly, you can really add an extra oomph to foam rolling if you add some motion in with the exercise. For example, if I was foam rolling the calves, instead of just rolling the calf back and forth, I could point my toe and bend my ankle back. That would put the muscle on stretch, which would allow me to really get deep into that myofascial area and work out those adhesions. Next, I wanna talk a little bit about frequency. That really is gonna depend on you as an individual. Some people will train more frequently and they may need to foam roll or work out those restrictions and adhesions on a more frequent basis. Others, they may not. Also, if you've had previous injuries or you have some areas that are really giving you grief, then you may wanna focus more frequently on those particular sections. All right, Muscle and Strength, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe below.